My name is Ian Stocks. I'm a taxonomic entomologist with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Division of Plant Industry in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, the groups that I'm responsible for are the scales, mealybugs, and their relatives, and the allorotidae, which are the white flies. At this point, then, um, we can, I think, go to um, back to Milvascutulus mangifery, and we can run through the key. All right, so we set up on that one now? Okay, so, um, I mean, this is obviously a fairly contrived key with a very a customized set of taxa here, you know, as, as, as someone getting a slide in from wherever, um, you know, the, the key that you have access to may read differently in its starting, but for this one I chose to start with the shape of the anal plates um, because they're a very solid, easily seen character that um, can quickly move some groups out of the way. So the first key would say, the first step, it says anal plates more than one and a half times as long as wide. Okay, so for this case, your instance, you're going to take basically this length here, okay? The length of the anal plates compared to the width of the anal plates. And you can see, so that's, that's what you'd form an aspect ratio. This has got a fairly high aspect ratio. It's not uh, really kind of... Uh, simple triangle together forming a kind of a quadrate structure. This is very exaggerated, okay? So this corresponds to um, uh, plate four, uh, figure one, and figure three. And you can also compare it to plate five, the first figure and the fourth figure. So the genus we're looking at is Milvascutulus, mangifery. It's very common on mangoes. Um, but it's related to another genus and actually used to be included in that genus called Protopulvinaria. Um, in Florida, we have the species Protopulvinaria uh, piriformis, and the anal plates there are even more exaggerated. They're three or more times as long, okay? Um, but telling these two apart is fairly straightforward. Um, even if you weren't sure about the anal plate, because if you look at the marginal CD, okay, go to the margin. As you can see on the slide, and then in figure five of plate four, they're actually fairly short and very, very uh, fringed, okay? In contrast, the protopulvinaria we have, um, plate five, figure three, those marginal CD are quite a lot longer and, and markedly less fringed. Another point of comparison, if you can find them again, uh, either at 20x or 40x, would be to find a dorsal CETA. Okay, and that's the 20x that I have on the screen now. And if I go to 40x, they're much more clear. They are fairly short, um, but club-shaped. And sometimes you have to play around um, and find just the particular CETA that's got the right orientation to make that um, that profile pop out or wherever it needs to be. Um, like that one, like that one there. Okay, during the slide mounting process, this was just perfect to get that thing pushed down on its side without breaking it off. You can see that's a very distinct club. If you compare that to the illustration um, plate five, figure five, that's just more of a more of a parallel sided rod that's quite a bit longer um, in proportion. So those are just a couple of the additional characters that if you had specimens that had a very high aspect ratio anal plate, that you'd be able to you'd tell the difference between a milvascutulus and a protopulvinaria. Okay? Let's see. Um, there's another character that I just want to show on here if I can get a good view of it, because we're going to encounter it again, even though we didn't use it for this key step. If I can get you to go to roughly um, just to the inner margin of the second and third leg, okay? 
Let me pull out of the magnification here a little bit. So here's, uh, we can move it to the side. Here's the posterior spiracle for reference, the second coxa, the third coxa. I want you to take a look in this region right here, okay? Um, I'm going to move it over to the side a little bit. I can just about perceive them by focusing up and down a little bit, but you can see there are some, it's a little harder on the projection screen, but on the screen I'm looking at, there are these vaguely faint little dark lines that are just sort of like they've been scratched onto the surface there. We're going to go up to 200x to really get a better feel for them. Um, phase lens here. Coming a little bit better into view at 200x, but they're all in this region here, okay? And then I'm going to go up to 400x. Should be pretty good at here. For comparison, take a look at um, uh, plate 5, figure 6. This is a tubular duct. And this is about the most common form of the tubular duct you'll find in, in soft scales. Okay? These are a, a wax producing structure. They uh, vary significantly in their distribution um, at the species level. Um, but they're made up of, of several independent parts. If, I get, if you get a good one in focus here, um, roughly there, for instance, is the opening of the duct onto the cuticle. Very often that's marked with a, 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 almost like a pock mark, a change in the color of the cuticle. There's uh, this part of the duct here, which is just a tube. There's a little bit of a sclerotization there that forms a cup. And then there's another smaller, typically smaller diameter tube that's a little bit more bendy. And then a kind of a cauliflower shaped structure at the tip there, which is basically glandular. And this is the, this is the structure that really helps secrete wax. Okay. Now there can be more than one morphology in, one, in, in a given specimen. At the species level you can have uh, one, two, three or so different um, distinctly different configurations of that morphology and the distribution of those different configurations can be regionally significant. So this is a very um, a very important character to be familiar with um, in soft scales. Uh, large chunks of the key are dealt uh, in, in typical keys are dealt with by taking a, a look um, at the uh, configuration or distribution of, of those uh, ducts. Okay? All right, so um, so we're done with Milva scutulus. Okay.